gari Ominazo na vio Amena uja na muka duyo Avi na muja do mano choyo Avi na muja no igago Everything else can wait Give me you all I hope I'm not too late Oh, give me you all Everything else can go away Oh, give me you all I hope I'm not too late Majuna muyo diyano Avila Hallelujah Hallelujah Praise the name of the Lord Hallelujah Do we have happy people tonight God in God's presence They are trusting to receive To gain fly, to gain capacity People that God has helped wondrously And graciously in the house can we celebrate the King of Glory for all He has done in and through our lives with a shout of praise? If that is for Jesus, we will do it a bit better than this. Hallelujah. Can we again celebrate one another even as we take our seat tonight in God's presence? online here on site to welcome each and every one of you to yet another powerful night of encounter. This is an Akazo, a place where results constantly and continue to compel itself in the lives of God's people. It is our expectation. I am so persuaded tonight that God is going to do a quick work in the lives of his people. In other words, whatever has buffeted you, whatever has been a trouble before today, in as much as you are here tonight, the rest are sure that the God of heaven is going to meet you at the point of your need, change every situation around for you for good, and give you a testimony in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It's testimony time. But before we do that, let's quickly turn our Bible to Joel chapter 2, verse 25 and 26. Joel 2, 25 and 26. This is the Bible speaking. It says, And I will restore the years that the locals had eaten the canker worm and the caterpillars, the palmer worms. I don't know what the devil has eaten before today in your life. Tonight is another night of restoration. In 26, the Bible went further to say, And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. Tonight, God is going to satisfy your hunger. Is going to do even beyond your widest expectations in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah and Akazo. So therefore, let's put our hands together as we welcome the following presence as they run forward to share with the latter house of what God has done in their lives. You can as well do well to key into some of these testimonies, whichever one is related to you, and trust God for your quick visitation tonight in the name of Jesus. Sister Sandra Abel. Sister Sandra Abel. Brother James Isaac, Brother James Isaac, Sister Gift, Sister Gift, Sister Success Jemima, and last but not the least, Sister Olabisi Favor, Sister Sandra Abel, Brother James Isaac, Sister Gift, Sister Success Jemima, and Sister Olabisi Favor. If those hands are for Jesus, the doer of all of these testimonies, we will do them even bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, even as they make their way forward. Hallelujah. You will confirm your name and straight to the point what God has done for you. Praise the Lord, Anakazo. My name is Sister Sandra Shayet Abel. I want to appreciate the name of the Lord for his protection over my life. Uh, last Anakazo meeting, after the meeting, I went and took a bike from here to uh, Sabo. So, 
the bike man collected the money. So when we are going, reaching to a certain point, he increased the speed. So me, I thought it's late, so I didn't even tell him to stop. So all of a sudden, he just diverted. He changed the road. Then at first, I, I wanted to get scared, but the spirit of boldness came on to me and told me that I should tell him to turn back this bike. So I told him, where are you taking me in Hausa? So he kept quiet at first. Then I told him, turn back this bike and take me to the right place I paid my money for. Then he started complaining that there are police on the road. I said, take me back to the place I paid this money for. Then he now turned back and took me to Sabo. On our way going to the Sabo, uh, the spirit told me, don't allow this soul to perish. Make sure you say something for him about Jesus. When I dropped from the bike, I told him in house that Jesus loves you. And stop what you are doing because it's bad. Thank you very much. Can we celebrate Jesus? If you had told the bike man you are going towards A direction, only God knows why he's going towards plan B. But whatever, God took charge. He gave her that spirit of boldness to have commanded that man to turn his bike back and took her to her destination. Let's celebrate Jesus once again for preservation of life. Hallelujah. Place your name and what the Lord has done for you. Praise the Lord and Akazo. My name is Success Jemima. I really want to appreciate God for his faithfulness over my life. I want to thank God for this year, the year of the voice of God. The voice of God has really been clear. I've been receiving guidance and directions back to back. I want to thank God for how he has been granting me favor at my office. It's just overwhelming. I'm the only Christian there, but God still favors me. I also want to thank God for last Sunday. I was having serious migraine. I almost didn't come to service, but I told God, if you allow me to come, I don't want to go back home without my migraine. Right in the service, the migraine left me. Until now, I've not felt it again. Lastly, I want to thank God for the message on seasons. That's like my best message ever. I really want to appreciate God because I knew I had lost a lot of seasons, but that day I got recovery. I couldn't sleep that night because I knew I was a priest in my family and in my territory. And I thank God because I'm already mounting up. I give God all the glory. Anakazo, if you believe this is your own season, you are changing you will celebrate Jesus for his doings in the life of his dearly beloved daughter. Let's do well to celebrate Jesus. The migraine that followed her into this last, last week's service checked out and today she's here whole and hearty appreciating God. I don't know how you came into tonight's service. I don't know what has followed you into tonight's service. It is our prayer that tonight every expectation, every pain that has followed you in, God heal you and make you whole in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please your name and what God has done for you. Praise the Lord, Hannah Kazo. My name is James Isaac. I've come to return all the glory to God for divine healing. Last year, I've been battling with this infirmity. Although there was a friend of mine who was battling with this infirmity, so I went to his house. He warned us not to use his soap, but I, I love to dear things. So I took his soap, I, I, I used his soap, all of a sudden, I came up with this infirmity too. I had an encounter last year where I saw God's servant and Michael Oropu. He held me by the hand and immediately he said, the Lord wants to put upon you the healing anointing. And immediately I went down on my knees and he prayed with me. He impacted that grace upon me. And he said, go and study TLS bond material. Since then, I didn't take this um, encounter for granted. I've been battling with this infirmity. Many men prayed for me, but there was no result at all. So um, I came for an Akazu service um, last, last Sunday, and I was angry in my spirit. I said, God, what does it take you to heal me of this infirmity? I was so agitated in my spirit. When the service was going on, uh, I decided to meet, after the service, I met a friend and I explained everything to him. And he said, have you met God's servant? I told him, no. And he said, why? That's why he said, I had the voice of God. Why? So I decided to meet God's servant. I went to God's servant and he prayed with me. He gave me his water 
And since then, to the glory of the Lord, this infirmity checked out of me. I have come to return all the glory to God. And secondly, I want to thank God for divine exemption. There was a day a friend of mine was cooking and my leg was, I was lying down on the floor. All of a sudden, the granite oil poured on my leg. And to the glory of God, nothing happened to me. I don't take that for granted. Lastly, I want to thank God for a transformed heart. The Lord has done great things in my life. There is this gradual transformation. There is this yearning, this deep intimacy that I've been seeking with the Lord for a very long time. And recently I went for a retreat, a corporate retreat with my brethren. After that, I got an encounter by the word where the Lord said, I will pour upon you my spirit. He said, I will pour upon you my spirit. Since then, I have been enjoying this intimacy, this purity, this silence within my spirit. Because as of then, I, I normally hear voices within my spirit. Voices that I cannot... Glory to God. Thank you, Anna Castle. Let's do well to celebrate Jesus. Infirmity that has lingered for a period of time after an encounter with God's servant last week. Everything checked out. Tonight is another opportunity for you to table your request before the God of heaven and trust God that every situation will be settled in the name of Jesus. Please, your name and what God has done for you. Praise God. My name is Great Precious, and I'm here to return all glory to God for his protection upon my life. Last year was, towards, last, towards the middle of last year, things happened that I couldn't, like I don't even know, I never expected. I left the, the, the I left Anakazo family and my department. It was too much, I couldn't bear, I was addicted to things that I can't even see. I had to just take a break and I didn't even tell my friend, the only person I, I was talking to, I just, I went off totally and it was last, it was December, I tried putting up with her and I told her and she, she did not say anything, she spoke to me and we talked together and men, thank God for her because she has been there for me right from time and I'm not taking that for granted. And to crown it all, I got admission into the University of ABU, Amadou Bello University. Uh, I applied there twice. I don't know why, but this is the second time, and God did it. Thank you. Can we celebrate Jesus? Every stronghold, every high mountain before today that our Father in the Lord has not planted, will be uprooted from your life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please, your name and what God has done for you, ma. Praise the Lord. My name is Favor, and I'm here to return all glory to God. A year, by this time last year, I joined an Akazo via a friend's invitation. And then it was a, a year of mounting up. The thing was mounted up. So when I came in, I knew that this is not one of, just one of the places that you go. So I, I was desperate for an encounter. And then by February ending, I had a dream where I was by a well fetching water and my phone was by my side. And I was busy with the phone fetching water, doing two things at the same time. Then an old man showed up, he smiled at me, he took the phone and he walked away without saying anything. So when I woke up, I quickly pressed my phone. I saw that it was on, I was happy. On the 2nd of May last year, my phone dropped. There was no break, there was no crack, he stopped working. All efforts, nothing worked. I was restricted from using Android phone. I had to use iTel phone for six months. I was using iTel. And that six months was a very, very remarkable, unforgettable period of my life where God molded, molded me beyond my imagination. And then by the ending of last year, I traveled home. And then towards um, during Shiloh precisely, I came back home, and then I was asleep. Before 2 a.m., my other sister came and woke me up that the thief is trying to boggle into the house. I was not even scared. I was like, 
a thief disturbing my sleep. And then he started chanting. He was trying all means to come into the home. He started chanting. And everyone was scared. And then by the special grace of God, I faced where that voice was coming from. And I spoke the word. And that was the hand we had of it. I know that this is the Lord's doing. And I'm not taking any of these encounters for granted. I've come to return all glory to him for reaching me out. It was not an easy time. That's six months. I lost contact. I lost so many contracts. But it is worth it. I say, may your name be praised forever. Thank you, Jesus. Let's celebrate Jesus and our castle. God can use anything for his glory. I am sure when that phone packed up, it was a major concern in her life. But today, she's here standing tall to appreciate the God of heaven for how he has molded her within that month of in that six months. We pray that God will continue to show himself mighty in and through your life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Your name and what God has done for you. Praise God. I'm gift by name. I want to thank God for his faithfulness, for his love. You know, back in school, I, I had this neighbor two months before I came back. So she traveled and then came back. All of a sudden, her legs started, sw her legs started swelling. And then her husband was telling all of us, he was calling me prayer warrior, come and do your work. My wife don't go match poison. And my head, I was like, what's my business? You are the priest over this woman, pray for her. I was thinking it's a joke. Till like three days later, she couldn't walk. Her husband was carrying her up and down. And then I just casually said, let's pray. I got my communion and then the blood. That day she gave her life to Christ. Then we prayed like magic. Somebody that could not walk. The next day, this man was walking like she was even running, like even me. I didn't believe it. Hallelujah. Second day, I had this backyard neighbors that were living wayward life. And Sorry, for the sake of time, straight to your point, please. Okay, I had this neighbors that. The summary of it is I just got prompted in my heart to talk to them. In my mind, I had already given up on them. I was like, this one's no fit change. But then God kept prompting me. And then I called them. I spoke to them. And surprisingly, they gave their life to Christ. And then they were living the life. Lastly, I want to thank God because five years ago, I matriculated. Today, I'm a graduate. And then in those five years, my parents never paid school fees for me for once. I was on scholarship by my state governor all throughout. Hallelujah. On account, so let's do well to celebrate Jesus for the life of our dearly beloved sister, for the grace to start and finish, and God having used her all through her staying in her place of studies. Congratulations. We pray that God will continue to open ways for you in the name of Jesus. Again, can we celebrate Jesus for so far the harvest of testimonies that have been shared upon this exalted altar? Hallelujah. We have some few written testimonies here. This is coming from Adewale. 2023 a year I will never forget in a hurry. And that's because I tasted and I saw that indeed the Lord is good. God is going to be good for somebody here tonight in the name of Jesus. And here is a testimony. 15 years Deliverance for 15 years, addiction to drugs, purposelessness, financial, spiritual, and mental instability. Unexplainable multiple provision for my family in the face of unemployment, keeping vessels of oil of flojar persistently full, and the sweet of it all is the overwhelming joy of salvation that daily loads my spiritual hunger. And finally, our brother is appreciating God for how he has helped him all through this period of 15 years of addictions. However, also, the second testimony is God providing for him in the midst of nothing. God kept and preserved his family. Tonight, God is going to meet you. God is going to provide for somebody and set him, make him for a, a, a touch for his family in the name of Jesus. Secondly, we have another testimony that is coming from Brother Gideon Joseph. Brother Gideon Joseph, good day, sir. I introduced my mom to your message, and she was listening to an old message of yours. Prior to that day, she has been having a serious pain in her ears that was supposed to take her to the hospital the next day. But as you were praying in that message, she placed her hands on the phone, 
until forever that being checked out. Can we celebrate Jesus in this kingdom? Distance is never and will never be a barrier. I don't know what had followed you into tonight's service. The healing power is domiciled here. We pray that the God of heaven will minister to you and heal you, make you whole and hearty in the name of Jesus. This other testimony is coming all the way from Ghana, far across the shores of this nation. Can we celebrate Jesus for amplifying the works he has put in the hands of this family? It says, my name is Augustina from Ghana. I want to share my testimony with my encounters with Anakazu. God richly blessed Apostle Ephraim Emmanuel. Amen. I suffered under a bondage of pornography and masturbation for 10 years. I wondered if I was ever going to break free because it had been tied. I have been tired of this for many, I've been tied to this for many years. Nobody knew what I was going through. Deep down inside of me, what I do realize is whenever I try to not to do this, I still go back to it over and over again. And it became a concern to our dearly beloved sister. I'm going to give a summary of it. And the pain of it all of where she stated is, it happens most of the times, it comes on Sunday when she engaged on this act. It comes on Sunday after she had gone to church, listened to powerful messages. When she come back home, she still find herself being held back in this web. It became a major concern for her. I continued for so long until someone recommended a sermon of Apostle Ephra for me to watch. That was August 2022. From that day onward, I have become a family member of Anakazu. She further went ahead to say, and to the glory of the Most High, I have not committed that act since November 2022. She came in contact with this family September 2022 and at November till today, till forever, God has, God has broke her out of that chain. Can we celebrate Jesus? I don't know the situations in your life. I don't know the addictions you had, you had, you had struggled with before today. But tonight, we believe and we trust God that God is going to come true for you. Our sister is not taking it for granted. She is expressing her gratitude to God. She prays that God will continue to increase this ministry in the name of Jesus. And Akazo, at our seated position, can we again celebrate Jesus and celebrate the King of Glory for the harvest of testimony? We pray that every testimony which has been shared upon this exalted altar tonight will be permanent and will remain established in the name of Jesus. Let's celebrate God's servant even as he comes up for that to take us forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please can put our hands together for the doer of all good things. <laughs> Welcome to Al Nakazo. It's my singular delight and honor to bring to you the vision declaration of this great mission. Calvary greetings. I am delighted to introduce you to Anakazo Mission International, an inclusive non-denominational ministry based in Kaduna State. Our community is built around three essential missions, all of which are dedicated to fostering spiritual growth and strengthening the bonds of our unity in the faith. First, we are committed to nurturing individuals into becoming spiritual watchmen, saviors and deliverers of their families and territories according to Obadiah 1 verse 21. And it says, And Savior shall come up out of the Mount of Zion and judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. To accomplish this, we have established various apostolic centers designed to enlighten believers about their divine ordination and the imperative to manifest God's glory. Second, we aim to bring speed and settlement to God's people on Isaiah 60 verse 22. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it to perform it. We deliver systematic teachings of God's word, illuminating its hidden wisdom to foster spiritual advancement and personal growth for our precious sects. Third, we stand firm against the spirit of confusion and their territorial influences. Drawing on Zechariah 20 
Zechariah 1, 20 and 21. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. Then said I, what have this come to do? And he spake, saying, these are the horns which have scattered Judah, and these carpenters have come to freedom. We uphold the doctrines of the early apostles and advocate sound biblical teachings, thus providing a fortification against falsehood and deceptive teachings. Our community gathers every Sunday at 5 p.m. for revival and encounter service at TMC Center, located at number 5 Garba Abbas Street, Bernawa Jerry. We also meet at 48, 49 Chirama Street Television every Tuesday for healing and communion service. We warmly invite you to join us as we worship, learn, and grow together in the spirit and unity of faith. To everyone worshiping with us for the first time, you're welcome to Anakazo Mission International. Let us journey together in spirit and in truth. Thank you. Anakazo, if that was for Jesus, make it louder. Make it louder and louder. Celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. We are gathered again before the presence of God. Tonight's meeting is for any and everyone that is tired of an oppression. Tonight's meeting is for any and everyone that is tired of an addiction. Tonight's meeting is the meeting of the Holy Ghost. Tonight's meeting, if you can subject your flesh to the leadings and the beatings of the Spirit, the blessings of the Lord will find you. I would like to urge someone that it will be a very good evening to you if you can die to the propensities of the flesh. It will be a very good evening to you if you can die to the desires of the flesh, if you can allow the Holy Ghost to stir you, only by that can you frustrate everything that is locked up in the heavens for you tonight. Amen. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. The Bible says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. In this verse of scripture, we saw a conversation that was happening between the Godhead. There was a council that began to happen in the Godhead. And God the Father was speaking to God the Son. And God the Son was speaking to God the Holy Ghost. And this conversation happened in aeons of age that cannot be fabricated into time. And this conversation, this intimacy, this koinonia, this fellowship that was happening between the Godhead, the product was man. What God had in mind was to create an, a, a, a masterpiece, an entity that would be for his pleasure. God wanted to create an entity. And God spoke to himself. He said, let us make man in our image. And there was a declaration that happened after that conversation. He said, let them have dominion over the birds of the air, over the fishes of the sea, and over everything that creepeth upon the face of the earth. Hope you know that when God created us, God fragmented himself into us. There's none of us that came into the earth without a gift. Every one of us came into the earth pregnant with the dimension of God. So when you find yourself in a place, God wants to see himself being manifested in that place. That's when a group of people can find themselves in the north and the love of God will be manifested in that place because a child of God has stepped in. He said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. So God does not have to come to Kaduna before God will be seen. When, when you see men, you have seen God. So in Jeremiah 1 and verse 5, the Bible said, before I formed thee in thy mother's womb, I knew thee, I sanctified thee, I ordained you to become a prophet. Every one of us came pregnant with a gift. Every one of us came with a dimension of God. But the unfortunate reality is that when you come into this world, the world lies in wickedness and in darkness. So everybody that comes into this world, the first entrance into this world is the entrance of darkness. So brother A can come into time. 
although he was designed in the studios of eternity, he was designed having a dimension of God, having a dimension of the anointing. But you will come into the earth looking like the fallen Adam. But there are structures, there are, there, are, there are things that God has set in place that anybody who can follow that pattern will understand the way to enter into transition, will understand the way to enter into manifestation. And tonight, I call them the channels of encounters. The number one channel of an encounter is the Holy Ghost. God has left the Holy Ghost in time to repair every seed that comes to earth. God has left the Holy Ghost as a technician to repair every fallen man. So when you come to the earth, although you came looking like Adam, the Holy Ghost is waiting for you to take you through the process of pruning and making so that you can become that which God designed in the studio of eternity. This was what happened to Jesus. The Bible speaking in Matthew chapter 4, the Bible said Jesus was led into the wilderness to fast. And when he stayed in that wilderness for 40 days, when he was coming out, the Bible said he came in the power of the Spirit. Every one of us will come into time broken. Every one of us come, will come into time looking like Adam. But we, when we allow the Holy Ghost to chisel us, when we allow ourselves to partner with the Holy Ghost, we will become that which God designed in the studios of eternity. There's a prototype of every one of us in the studios of eternity. It was John the Baptist that went into the wilderness. And when he was coming out of the wilderness, the Bible says he came in like a pillar of cloud. The number two channel of an encounter is men. When God wants to change your life, when God wants to transform your life, when God wants you to manifest that which you have been pregnant with, he begins to lead you to men. There are certain men on earth that have become systems and portals. When you come under them, the heaven will be opened over you. An example is John the Baptist. Jesus, after he had come back from the wilderness, the Bible says he went to the baptismal class of John the Baptist. And when he was immersed into water, the, the Bible says the heaven was opened over him. And there was a voice that came from the heaven. He said, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. It came to pass that David was running away from Saul because he didn't want to be killed. And the Bible says he went into the cave called Adullam. And when he got into that cave, broken and battered men, people were despised in the society. Inconsequential people in the society. They ran and went and met him in that cave of Abdullah. And because of the open heaven over a man, the life of those men were transformed. In 2 Samuel chapter 23 and verse 8, the Bible said, These are the mighty men that David had. They were not mighty before, but they came before a man that has an open heaven over his life. And all of a sudden, might came for them. He said, The same was Adino the Eshnite. He took his bed and he slew 800 people at the time. He said, The same was Eliazar, the son of Dodo. He took his sword. He fought until his hand clave onto the sword. This was a man that was despised by the society. This was a man that was called inconsequential. This was a man that was called nobody. But he came before a man and all of a sudden there was an open heaven. He now understood that he had might all along. The Bible says he fought onto his hand clave onto the sword. And a great victory was fought for Israel that day. He said the same was Shammah, the son of Agai. Ah! Ka -ka 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 -ka. Oh, he was. Hey, there's a weapon, there's an artillery weapon in the spirit. Whenever we come before a man that God has opened the heaven over his life, you don't need to struggle. There's an anointing simply to just come on you. The Bible says, Shammah, the son of Age. Although all the other army they ran away and left him, the Bible says he stood his ground and he fought against a garrison of army. And he wrought a great victory for Israel. This, oh, I will share this testimony. The first week I came to Anakazo. When I left Anakazo, I was staying in Thomas Papa's lodge then. I was a copper. When I went back to my lodge, I, I, I just lay down as, as though I wanted to sleep. And then I had an encounter. And then the heaven was open. And I saw a demon appear to me. He said, you think you will rise? I said, I will rise. I am under a man called Apostle F.I. Emmanuel. His name in the spirit is called Flavius. There's a might that God has given to him. He's a captain of a host. And I'm among the million. Men. Men are potters. Men are systems. They have dimensions. Because of their sacrifice, there's a dimension that will be opened unto them. You don't need to struggle for that anointing. 
There are three ways to assess an anointing. You either assess an anointing by prayer, by rigorous prayer and fasting, or you assess the anointing by your alignment to a vessel that God has graced. The last channel of an encounter is a congregation. Hope you know that for some of us, we did not just come here because we wanted to come. We were summoned to this place. In Jeremiah 3 and verse 15, the Bible says, I will give you pastors over my own heart. They will teach you the word of the Lord. They will nurture you in the way and in the fear of the Lord. When God wants to bless your life, when God wants to transform your life, He brings you before a congregant of people. Everyone that you see here, there are alabaster bosses. There are fragrances in their life. And if the fragrances can break open, you will tap from that fragrance. Just imagine every one of us here as alabaster bosses. When you leave this place, you will become a compendium of many aloes. You are your life. This is why I know that you cannot live an castle and remain the same. Tonight, I don't know if there is somebody here desperate for an encounter. You are here, you are trusting the Lord. I've been coming here, but I've been hearing week in and week out the mighty thing that God is doing in this place. Yet, I'm not seeing the change in my life. If you are desperate enough, you will receive an encounter. Can you lift up your voice and pray in the spirit?
Father, we worship you. We bless your holy name. We worship you, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Anakazo, are you excited? Come on, celebrate Jesus. Come on, is that how you celebrate Jesus? Celebrate Jesus. Glory to God. You can have your wonderful seats. Amen. If you're here with your offerings, can I please package them? If you're here with your tithe also, you can kindly call the attention of any usher and then get an envelope. Then package your tithe properly. Proverbs 11 verses 24. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. It says, One gives freely. Now, note the word freely. It means nobody forces you. No cajoling. No manipulation. No gun pointed at your head. It says freely. Yet grows all the richer. Then it says another withholds what he should give. That means you are expected to give, but you are withholding it. It says that one will suffer want. Now let me read from another translation, the NIV. It says, one person gives freely. Note the word freely again. Yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly. Unduly means inappropriately. It says, that one comes to poverty. See, regardless of the opinion you have about the word of God, the truth is, it won't change the principles of that word, the word of God. Giving is a principle and it is expedient for us to do according to that foundational truth. It is important for us to walk according to the instructions of God. Amen. Tonight, I don't know which category you fall into. Is it the category of those who give freely to God because you love God? Or will you be among the ones that will withhold what you are supposed to give to God? You can't say God has not blessed you. You will be a liar for that. Tonight, we are going to be giving God, giving to God because we love him. Because we are grateful for everything that he has done for us. Amen. And then even as you give your tithe, even as you give your offerings, I want you to give it with joy in your spirit. Give it cheerfully. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. If you're here with your offerings and your tithe, can you just pray over them? Just speak words. Yes, Lord. Even as we give this evening, we'll get back in many folds. The word of God says that he will open the windows of heaven and that he will pour out his blessings. Even as we give, we receive from you tonight. Father, we worship you. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Please kindly cast your offerings and then your tithe. God bless you. Hallelujah, Nakazo. Hallelujah. Who's happy to be in the presence of God? Can you wave your hands to Jesus? Wave your hands to Jesus. Now, can we be on our feet as we worship God? Just begin to adore Him. Reverence His holy name. He's the King of kings, the Lord of lords. I am that I am, the mighty man in battle, the rose of Sharon. We give you praise, Lord. Receive all the praise, Jesus.
Yeah. 
finds him and live without a proof that he met God. Tonight I want you to be deliberate. You are going to articulate your desires. You will tell the Lord, leave something upon my life this night that I will remember this service for, for the rest of my life. Leave something upon my life and destiny tonight that I will remember I came before the Lord. I will remember I appeared before him. I will remember I showed up on the mountains of encounters.
wherever you are, wherever you are, it's a time to cry. Cry for an encounter. For some of us, our cry tonight is mercy, mercy. Have mercy upon me. Hallelujah.
Lord. So, Father, we come before you. Take us deeper. Take us deeper. Deeper in love with you. Deeper in love with you. Deeper in love with you. Hallelujah. Please, you may be seated. God bless you. Tonight, by the leading of the Spirit, I'll be sharing with us an emphasis of the Spirit for the season. A message titled, Fear Not. Fear Not. Romans chapter 1, verse 17. Romans chapter 1, verse 17. We just celebrate my brother, my friend, Minister Barry Strings, one more time. Thank you. Oh, we will be ministering together. Come on, if he has blessed you, can you just celebrate him? Amen. Get Romans chapter 1, verse 17. For in the gospel, for daring is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written. The just shall live by faith. Please, let's read together. One, two, go. Very quickly, Galatians chapter 3, verse 11. Galatians chapter 3, verse 11. The Bible speaking, it says, But that no man is justified by the law, in the sight of God, it is evident for the just shall live by faith. Please, I need us to read it on our own again one more time. One, two, go. Very quickly, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. The Bible speaking, it says, Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. You read now. Lastly, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4 Behold his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him but the just shall live by his faith Please you read now Several occasions 
we find this repeating across various scriptures an emphasis in the spirit the same sentence the just shall live by faith both in the old and new testament so it never changes it is an ordinance it is a pathway it is a method god continues to emphasize on that the just shall live by faith you see it was particular in the old covenant where we read from habakkuk 2 verse 4 that the just shall live by his faith but now in the new covenant we don't live by our faith we live by our faith in the son of god so it is that faith that becomes our enablement this is why there is a difference between how it was rendered in the old testament and how it was rendered in the new because the faith we now live by is the faith of the son of god and so everybody sitting here i welcome you to an encounter tonight that will define your perspective define your worldview and ultimately guarantee victory in life I need you to pray for one minute. Tell the Lord, I wave goodbye to every version. I wave goodbye to every representation of my being that does not align, that does not tally with your word, with your prophecies for my life. I wave goodbye at your word. He says, and Joseph remained in the dungeon until the word of God tried him. The word of the Lord will be trying some mindsets tonight. The word of the Lord will be trying some belief systems. The word of the Lord will be trying some convictions. And tonight, you will tell the Lord, I'm available. Let your word find me. Let your word find me. Hallelujah. You see, the world has been programmed to saturate its inhabitants with frequencies and impulses of fear. And if your reality is governed by this world, you will be ruled by fear. Because there is a reality that powers the world as we know it, the cosmos, the fallen world. I want to show us some things that I believe will make for victory tonight. Across various nations, across various regions and cities, the infrastructure of security have continued to fail. Lives are being lost, properties are being lost. All kinds of reports of tragedy, both young and old, rich and poor, none is spared. Everybody is becoming more conscious of how dangerous and how deadly the times have become. Meanwhile, even before any of these things took shape, we have been fortified by prophetic insights as regarding the lot of the end time. And so it will be a mistake for us to act surprised because Jesus has made us um, conversant with some revelations and some of the things that will befall the world especially as the age come to an end and so it is important tonight that we understand where we can command victory from as various security protocols are breached and various evil reports continue to bombard our soul the average news you get when you put on the television the average news you get when you go to the social media there are layers and layers upon layers of negative news. In fact, what sells is negativity. You will hardly put on the TV and see good news. <laughs> what sells is negativity. And there is an agenda. The cosmos was wired to use fear to keep people glued to its ordinance and to make people not realize their potentials in God. I will show you at the course of this teaching the real essence and the real purpose of the spirit of fear. You would know that everything is ministry. 
There is nothing like entertainment with the people of the world. They are not interested in entertaining you. It is either that content is going to edify you or it will corrupt you. So the aim of every content is either to corrupt your nature as a son of God or to edify you. And the contents that edify, they are things that are sanctioned from Zion. The majority of us are currently praying prayer points that don't reflect God's perspective concerning our life. A majority of us have written all kinds of prayer points, all kinds of things we believed. And like Adam, this night, God is asking you, who told you? Who told you? Where did you hear this from? The question was not, where is your clothes? The question was not what happened to your raiment. He was never wearing anything. The real attack was information. Where did you get this information from? This is the real area we are going to be confronting tonight. And I want for everybody to yield themselves. And there is no need to resist. When God touches an area that is affecting your own way of life, be open because we'll be praying intermittently. So every time we have that opportunity, you press something into your life. Maybe we pray for one minute. Lord, every ruling spirit, every negative cloud of fear around my life, of fear around my destiny, around the family, I rebuke it by the entrance of your word. I rebuke it by the entrance of your word. Who told you? Who told you? Who told you you will not live long? These are certain people's conviction. Who told you you will have organ failure? These are certain people's conviction. Who told you you may not get married? These are certain people's conviction. And God is questioning tonight. Who told you? Over 70 times in scripture, it was written clearly, spelled out clearly, fear not. And over 500 times in the King James Version, the concept and the matter of fear is being dealt with, was being dealt with. Over 500 times, either fear for God, which eventually translates into honor and regard for God, and it means you would ultimately have no fear for man or anything because your fear is towards God or fear as a torment. There's a sound. There's a sound. I think we should look at it. It is interesting because... The truth of the matter is you can either live by faith or you will live by fear. But every human will live after one of these pathways. It's not a feeling, it's a pathway. If your life is governed by fear, your decisions will be affected. Your beliefs will be affected. Including the way you view the world. Your worldview will be shaped by that pathway of fear. You can see a fellow person living under the influence of fear and both of you will know yourself. Because there is, there is this similarity you can find in the life of anybody who is governed by fear. Meanwhile, there is a place of fear that looks like common sense. This is where Satan seduced people into that whole matter of fear from. You can be living under fear, which is bondage, which is captivity, which is torment, and think is wisdom. That you are careful, that you are a very careful person. That's why you are living the way you are living. Meanwhile, without faith, it will be impossible to please God. 
that atmosphere of fear. Fear is to Satan what faith is to God. There's exact thing faith is to God. That was what fear is to Satan. God cannot walk outside the atmosphere of faith. Satan too cannot walk outside the atmosphere of fear. And so the first forerunner, every time Satan will need to invade a space or a destiny, is that they send the spirit of fear ahead. That spirit is like the person who goes ahead and prepares the ground. There is a spirit that must show up and convince you that you are alone. So that when demons rise against you and challenges buffet the family, your first thought is not God. Your first thought is man because a spirit had prepared the ground before the attack. A spirit had convinced you before now that God is not with you. And so this is why when the assurance comes as regarding God's presence, he says, fear not for I am with you. Every time we are instructed not to fear, like I'm saying now again, God is emphasizing our natural habitat, which is faith. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 10, let me show us something. Genesis chapter 3 from verse 10. Adam had fallen. Adam heard the voice of God calling at him and he hid himself. In verse 10, the Bible says, when God called Adam, 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 where are you? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Listen, listen. This is the first time the word fear will be captured in the whole of creation. I was afraid. You tell the person by your side, fear follows disobedience to God. Tell them again, fear follows sin. Tell them fear follows rebellion. If you know how fortified you are, if you know how covered, how protected you are on a normal day, if you keep your way with God pure, the spirit of fear has no... Hey, let me give you an illustration. Have you ever fasted before? And you fasted and pushed beyond your natural threshold. Maybe your normal was 3 p.m. every day, and for some reasons you were supported by divine strength, and you were able to touch 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 1, 1 a.m., there will be an unusual consciousness of strength that enters you. An unusual boldness that is entering you. Not because necessarily situations are changing. It is a nature that has always been yours, that was deadened by sin, deadened by a lack of consciousness of your ordination in God. The moment you deprive the flesh of its dominion over you, the spirit begins to bring forth every character every virtue, everything that defines his essence. This is why when people tarry fasting for a while, you, you can never see a timid fasting man. Never. You see them always as bold as a lion. Because the moment you begin to stay on the altars of fasting, the natures and appetite of the flesh are deadened you will find out that even though you were struggling with an addiction, something that had capacity to keep you bound all along, the moment you introduce fasting, you dis, you dis, you, 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 you begin to, to, hi, there's a word I'm looking for. You scatter that alignment Satan has. There are people here that say, okay, I have tried everything humanly possible to break free from the grip. That is upon my soul. I have, there's nothing I have not done. Brother, I will give you a method tonight. You, your first step is fasting. It's not the word, it's fasting. It's not prayer, it's fasting. A man who is kept down, a man whose flesh has become so bogus that the interest of his spirit is no longer sorted, there is only one way to pull out first, is to fast. It is when you begin to fast that you become sensitive to your spirit man that has been deadened by the works of the flesh. When you begin to fast, you will start touching the help of God. Because at a point in your fasting, you will receive the grace to tarry. And so you cannot pray until you are quickened. And one of the ways God quickens men is that he stirs them with hunger. When he stirs you with hunger, your response is to abstain from food. That food you abstain from. If all you did was stay away from food and you ate eventually, walked down is zero. So why staying away from food? We pray and we study the word. 
so that when you eventually eat, the equilibrium, that, that synergy that is between the flesh, the spirit, and the soul, your spirit must have gained some knowledge because you fed it intentionally during the fasting schedule. This is what many people do. They go into fasting and all they do is just hunger strike. They stay away from food from morning to six. But while they are away from food, they spend a bulk of the day sleeping. So you claim you are fasting and you slept from probably 11 a.m. down to 5.59. Then you open your eyes in 5.59 and say, thank you, Jesus. What, what a dangerous fasting experience. Meanwhile, listen, don't laugh. I'm serious. Food, as in rice and beans, is not the only meal of the flesh. Sleep is also food for the flesh. The flesh knows it's an ancient technology. It, is, it, it has humbled men more passionate than yourself. And so if all you do while waiting on God is only to abstain from food, when you eat eventually, there was no difference whether you waited or not because the flesh will resume its government. This is why, why we kept the flesh under lock and key. We intentionally fed our spirit so that the day you now feed the flesh, he will not meet the spirit as timid as it was. He will meet the spirit edified. He will meet the spirit fortified. This is why we are down with all kinds of addiction because we are not ready to join the path of deliverance. Somebody says, I have met this person. They laid hands on me. The appetite for alcohol is still there. Brother, the moment you, you begin to shake that equilibrium by fasting, this is what you do first. The moment you initiate fasting, you have started a step in the path of deliverance. I cannot fast. I have ulcer. Meanwhile, listen, I'm speaking to all the ulcer patients now. Also patient in quote. <laughs> so can I drink Zobo when fasting? I'm talking to you now. We declare a fast and some people all kinds of funny questions. He says, sir, what, what if I just sip Mirinda? <laughs> you can see the flesh of men. It, 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 it refuses to be dethroned. It wants, you know, you, know, you, you don't know how you don't know how oppressed people are. A man can go without fasting from morning and be very busy and forget to eat. But the moment there is an intentional decision that today is fasting, the whole of your body enters a rebellious mode. You will pass in front of your fridge and the fridge will look like there is gold inside. You want to be free? You must, you must scatter that dominion that has been established. That pattern, that flow, that grip, that bondage. The first thing to introduce is fasting. While we are fasting, then we give ourselves voraciously to the study of the world. You know why? Because we all with unveiled faces, beholding us in a glass, the glory of the Lord, we are changed into that same image even from glory to glory. It means that the man who started the fasting is not the man that will come out of the fasting. There must be a transformation, a measurable change that showed that this is what I became because I waited on the Lord. He says, them that wait upon the Lord. He says, they will be strong. So strength is one of the dividends of waiting on God. Number two, he says they will mount up with wings. I don't know how I got into the matter of fasting. Fear not. <laughs> Please tell the person by your side, fear not. You see, fear is not just an emotion. It is a spirit. And the Bible says... I have not given you the spirit of fear. Faith is also not just an emotion. If you are writing, please take this down. Faith is not just a feeling of confidence. Faith is a conviction bettered by knowledge. Faith is a conviction bettered by knowledge. Fear is not just an emotion. It is a spirit. 
in Romans chapter 10 verse 17. Romans chapter 10 verse 17. The Bible says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Listen, it's not only faith that comes by hearing. The spirit of fear too can dominate your life on account of the things you opened your ear to. The spirit of fear too can dominate your life on account of the things you opened your eyes to. When you can identify the channels by which negative informations perpetually have access to your life through. After today's meeting, there will be need to select your friends the way you pick stones from beams. Because you will need to guard the gates. You will need to watch the access points, the things that enter you. There are people every time they come around you and they leave, there will be an unusual sense of panic that comes upon you because it's a reality they carry and they are envoys of that spirit. They cannot help but vocalize the interest of that spirit. You can carry so much fear that everywhere you go to, when you speak one, two sentences, everybody is under the influence of fear. Let's be very careful the kind of things that are going on. If you know a person that, you see, you need to be more conscious of God's presence than the presence of demons, witches, and Satan. You need to be more conscious. This is what it meant by he that is in you is greater. You need to be more conscious of the power of God at work in your life than the power of darkness. When a person is always intentional about glorifying Satan, and this is not about worship, just talking about the exploits that witches do. Believe me, you will not know that it's working yet until a time comes when you find it hard to believe God. It is fear that has gotten a grip of you. I will give us tonight five major categories of fear common to man. Five major categories of fear common to man. If you are getting blessed, please say amen. Ah, come on now. Say amen. amen. Maybe before I list it out, many of us, we will need to realize the damage that that atmosphere of fear causes around our life. There are physical consequences of fear. There are also health consequences of fear. Too many people are anxious, full of anxiety. The fear that has gripped them and the kind of torment and restlessness that they have been subjected to over time, it has translated into real medical, medical cases. Sometimes when I sit with people and pray with them and I hear young men, young women, they have high blood pressure. At age 25, your BP is skyrocketing. What is going on? Meanwhile, there is no generation that has been bombarded with the thoughts, the worries, and the cares of this world like ours. This is responsible also for the shortcuts that many people begin to look for. We have not had the infestation of this Yahoo thing like our generation. The average young man is looking for an easy way out. The average young woman is looking for an easy way out. And you can never remove the path of labor from success. Any formula that removes labor is a fraud. You may be under fear and don't even know. You may be under fear, the influence of fear, and not know. The way you will eventually begin to discern is to what extent does the word of God come easy to you? To what extent do you believe the things God says concerning you? Are you quick to believe or there is a layer, there is a resistance that always tries to emphasize that until you see it will not be there. That's one of the diagnoses to know that the spirit of fear has a hold over your life. Very quickly, the first major category of fear is the fear of death. If you are writing, write it down. The fear of death. Hmm. That means the fear of dying or the fear of ceasing to exist. 
the fear of death. In Psalm 118 verse 17, the Bible says, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The human heart is consciously trying to avoid death, either subconsciously or consciously. A majority of the decisions we are making, a majority of our carefulness, it is that particular fear of death that is the undertone of many of our decisions. There are people here that the last time they traveled to their hometown was probably in 1990. What is responsible for that precaution? The fear of death. There are people here that not even their friends, they cannot eat anything outside. Even if they saw the person who cooked it, they cannot trust anybody. What is responsible for those kinds of decisions is the fear of death. There are people who want to go to bed at night, they close the door, put all kinds of... <laughs> then put another burglary inside again and lock it with padlock. Meanwhile, the things that can kill you, they don't use doors. Because you wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The things that are incensed against you, they will, they will follow the smallest crack between the sand that they used to make the block. They will, they will go through it and appear in the room. This is why they break people's door and carry their dead bodies out. Because he was able to secure himself physically, but he has no security spiritually. And in the realm where people are made and where people fall from, he has no fortification. This is why if you see a man governed by fear, all of his precaution notwithstanding cannot save his life. Fear is an attraction for doom. Anything you become scared of, you are attracted. Including even Job. Look at what Job said. He says, the thing I feared the most the thing I feared the most. So when Satan was ready to afflict him, he, he, he found a way to assess his fears. There are people here, if you know the import of the things I'm sharing with you, you will labor to fight that spirit out of any space of your life. There are areas we are confident. There are areas we have received faith to trust God. But there are other areas of uncertainty. It is those places you will fight fear out of tonight. Because as long as fear remains in that place, you will barely have the visitation of God. God walks in the atmosphere of faith. Fear of death. This fear is so, is so much that including very old people, I shall not die but live. Baba at 90 is quoting it still. So it is, it is a, it's, <laughs> listen, <laughs> nobody wants to die. If you truly and you really want to do authentic business with God, you must overcome the fear of death. There is a premise Satan will always explore every time he wants to buffet a life. The moment you are still interested or rather you are interested in keeping your life, you will lose it. In fact, the Bible speaking in Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, it says they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Having one kind of mindset, they love not their life unto death. So any man who truly do warfare successfully and prevail over the hordes of darkness, you must come to a totally for the cause of God and for his glory. You can even be a minister and all you are doing is self-preservation. When Satan comes for you, there is a premise to explore because you are not an offering yet. He says, I beseech you therefore brethren, Romans chapter 12 verse 1, by the mercy of the Lord that you present your bodies as living sacrifice. A sacrifice, if it must be a sacrifice, must be offered. Are you offered? 
You know, when you hold on to so many things, you keep holding on to so many passions, holding on to so many interests, Satan has a room to explore. What do you threaten a dead man with? Have you seen a dead body? The zenith of any threat is I will kill you. And you come to a man that has died already. What, what do you tell him? What do you tell him? In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 19 He says if only in this world We have hope We are of all men Most miserable There is something that gives you capacity To ride above the fear of death it means you have attributed importance to an existence beyond this one. It means you have a hope of another existence. You have a hope of a city far beyond the stars. It means you know there is something of eternal glory that supersedes what I have in this current one. And so if they take this from me, it's a quick route to enter a celestial realm. If you live for yourself, you will fear death all your life. If you live for Christ, you will embrace death anytime. Any man who lives for a cause bigger than him, and this cause is Christ. The moment you live for Christ, death has no power over you again. Because your choice, your interests are always to serve the cause of the master. My life is not my own. They say what uncle said. By, by December, that somebody will die. Listen, listen. There is a way you walk like a living dead. And people come around you trying to provoke that, that atmosphere of fear. And I will give you that illustration again. What can you threaten a dead man with? If you have not been to the mortuary before, you will not understand what I'm telling you. When people are dead, you will see CC with fair skin, with attachment that she just braided. You will see her naked and, she, and she's not aware that she's naked. No, a dead man has no in <laughs> We are dead to this world. Unfortunately, many people are alive to many passions. So when Satan comes, he has something to explore. It was Jesus that says the prince of this world cometh and finds nothing. Dead to the world. Meanwhile, it is this realm of death. This is where you qualify for life. Because the faith. It is only men who go to death, they taste resurrection. The resurrection power is only available to those who die. Until a corn of wheat falls to the ground and die. I'm sharing this with you again tonight. You have an opportunity by yourself. Because if you keep your life, you will lose it. It takes death to come alive. Honor, fit for the master's use. Listen, let me ask you a question. If Jesus wants to show his love, show his power of providence, and extend a helping hand to a people in need, which vessel will he use? If God wants to show power and challenge the ordinance of captivity that has kept the people down, which vessel will he use? Meanwhile, it's not every vessel that can do the same thing. Hey, there are electric vessels that have different capacities, different wires have different capacities. 
There are wires that are used for wiring of houses. There are other wires with higher capacities. They are not used for wiring houses. They are used to carry current directly from the power producing plant to supply cities and nations. This is how the, the capacity God can do business with you is to what degree you die. Your debt is directly proportional to your capacity in God. If you die enough, God have enough space. And so debt is ingredients. Many of us, you are dead in the area of relationship and marriage. You have sold your will to God. And say anybody you choose, I believe. But you are not dead in finance. You are still much alive in finance. Your common sense rules over everything. And God has no say. Tonight, I repeat it again. Everybody must look around their life and tell Lord, tell the Lord, I give you absolute control. Absolute control. Access. How do you overcome the fear of death? If you are writing, you overcome the fear of death by living for Christ. Men who live for themselves are always afraid to die. Just imagine, it means the moment you leave this realm, you are entering a realm where you have no guarantee. It says, do not store up treasure in this world where thieves and rot and mort can corrupt and break into it. He says, store up for yourself treasures in heaven. So it means while you are alive, there must be a conscious effort to deposit, deposit resources, deposit wealth, deposit inheritance in the world beyond. This is what you do when you win souls. You win souls to have a legacy in the world to come. It was Daniel that says, them that win souls, they are wise. He says they will shine like the firmament of heaven. Anybody who knows that there is a world, there is a reality beyond this life, their decisions will not always be measured into the now. You will live for that world too. Wherever you are, just bow your head in one minute. Ask the Lord, Lord, rid me of the fear of death tonight. That I live for your will and I come to a place where I too can say, for me to live is Christ's. Lord, at the end of the adventure called life, let my life be summarized with one statement. He lived for Christ. He lived for Christ. Every fear of death that is a product of a lack of death around my life, Lord, I lay it down. I lay it down. I lay it down. Make sure you are talking to God where you are. I'm saying you should pray because of the seasons that are ahead of you. So that you don't deny Jesus tomorrow. Some of you is not a threat to life that will make you deny him. The slightest inconvenience, the slightest financial struggle, and you will deny your maker. Tonight you will tell him, give me, give me power over the fear of death. That I come to a point where the totality of my life is dedicated to serving your will. I would waste upon your altar. I would waste following you. At the end, that's all the world would say of me. There's so many things to follow, but I live following you in life or in death. I am yours. It's a vow. I would waste upon your altar. I would waste following you. At the end, you live 
until you are dead, you will not know the priorities of spiritual things. If you are not dead, the mundane will attract you all the time. Only dead men have the right perspective. Sometimes at dead beds, that's where people come into an understanding of what matters in life. Because they ran from pillar to post all through their days under the sun. But when it came to the moment of transition, they saw what truly matters. There were people that were away from family for a long time chasing money. But they realized at the last minute of transition that all these things will not count. It is what you did to your fellow man. The legacies you are leaving behind are people who would remember you. Not money, not cars. Strangers will share it and your legacy will be lost forever. Not houses. They will become outdated very soon. There is nothing outside God that can give you an inheritance in the new Jerusalem. This is why a life spent in the work of God is a life well spent. A season came in my life where the pressure became too much. It looked like I was failing. The more I was loving Jesus, I was failing. And the devil made sure there were people to vocalize it to my ear, including those I hold in high regard. Their opinion meant so much to me. And they would call me from time to time and say, the way you are going, you are failing in life. You are failing. Better. Hey. I went and I went to take a, 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 a teaching job. I, I, because as soon as I left campus, the Lord gave me this mandate. When I took a teaching job, I, I joined it with ministry. So if you are a teacher here, you are the only one that can understand what I'm about to say. I will take five subjects every day. I will do teaching plan. I will do lesson notes. I would arrange this thing for every day of the week, Monday to Friday. When I come back, I'm too tired because there is no time for aimless gist and aimless trolling. On Friday, I will come directly from the school, use pure water to wash my leg, run home, change, and rush back to the pulpit. When the Lord saw my heart as a graduate, they will prize me 15,000 naira for a month. A second class upper graduate strong to one 15,000 for a month what can you do it can't even cover my transport I will carry it that 15,000 because when we started for the first year we didn't take any single offering no tithes I will carry it and go and pay the rent of the hall and the 15,000 was not enough to pay the rent so I will still fall back to my elder brother and say is there anything and may God bless that boy God bless him He's not a boy, he's a man. <laughs> I know he'll be listening. <laughs> so, so that we, I don't need to apologize later. And he'll say, how much do you need to top up the rent? I'll say this, he will send it. Sometimes I'll be sitting down, he will buy a suit and say, take, you need to come out looking sharp. What did we have? Only a, a plastic table. That was the pulpit. A plastic white table. And I will come, there's no mic, no sound, nothing. I will teach as though I'm talking to a thousand people. And that is where the only joy of life was found. Nothing else. Nothing else. I think I understand that song. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you are the cup that won't run dry. The things I'm sharing, I have my brothers here who labored with me in that season. All of us will show up. Lugara, you're my witness. We were in one room in Baka Street, a small shop, a very tiny shop. We will come ourselves and do the wiring so that there will be light. We will come with a cable, a naked, a dangerous things were, were done. When you connect that naked cable, then you put a bulb. Then we will now pray inside the space. We prayed for one month and they pursued us. When I began to complain to the Lord, this, this thing is too stressful. Another another job opened. So I took a job as a sales rep for a pharmaceutical company. While I was there for them, I go to many of these teaching hospitals to go and detail in the consultation room. I will spend the night memorizing, reading all of these pharmaceutical documents, and then I go and detail for specific drugs. I was detailing for Zopis and Nuracam then. I am not a pharmacist. It's not my field. But I spend the night familiarizing myself with the concept when I do a presentation to a doctor, they would. My prayer always is that let no question follow. 
Because there is a way I arranged it. When I finish, I'll, before I conclude, I'll say, for want of time, I know you are a busy man. So we would have engaged more on this matter. I would just leave it like this. And I would be very, very cautious so that no question follows. And when I leave, prescription for that drug increases. Because my work is to present a difference between that particular brand and the competition out there. What advantage does our brand have over the competition? I will take my time and itemize the various components and the molecules in our own brand. And then when I finish talking, they will say, let's, let's see it. I will give them a sample. So prescription increase, it eventually impacts on the sales and the company is happy and I'm paid. I will live here to Shika in Zaria and finish in teaching hospital Zaria and come back to Kaduna on the same day and go straight to uh, Guam Nawan. It is, it is then that I, I knew the sufferings of people. When you enter some, some, some rooms and you see the way people are dried. Because of how the nature of that job was, I spent more of the time working. So I'll be so exhausted. On Friday when I come, you would, if anybody is sensitive, you, you, would pick, you would pick the tiredness inside me. I am a young man, but the things I put upon my shoulder, he, he made my voice to have age inside. So I realized when I'm speaking, there'll be people looking at me with, I don't know whether the, the sight was that of admiration or pity. So one day I found out it was pity. A company of brethren came together and they said they want to advise me, please, I should stop wearing this shoe. Hi. As though that was not enough, God then opened a job for me in Kaduna Electric. And my job was that of load survey officer. It was our duty to check the wires that descended from the pole and the various house and lungu that the thing entered. And everybody who is using free light without a bill, we are the ones that generated bill. So when we pass and we see that there's an illegal connection somewhere, you, you, you draw current from here, we don't tell you. <laughs> then we also ask you for your permission to let us have access to your space. So we check the kind of equipment, the kind of electronics you have. That gives us an idea of your, your power consumption. This is for people who are, who are not metered, people who use direct. A person who is metered, we don't need this thing. The moment we see that you have gadgets, you have ACs, you have deep freezers and all of these things and water heaters everywhere, the rest assured that after my visit, your next bill will be almost times three of what you paid last month. Meanwhile, when I come, I'll be speaking to you so calmly that we, 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 we are just trying to see the kind of weight that is upon our facilities. It's not any, there'll be no challenge, but <laughs> it's a challenge. Came to pass, but on this day, because we wear this cap to shield the sun, I was walking somewhere around Rikachuku because that's where they posted me. And while I was walking, one very hostile looking young boy in that area looked at me and, and did like this. So I began to tell God, please give me another job. I, these people will not live long on this one. Do you know how people hate Nepal, Nepal staffs? I have gone through that hatred firsthand. I will hide my cap when I'm leaving house so that nobody will know that I am with them. <laughs> I continued to work until my itinerary became too busy to engage a secular job. You know, there are people sitting here, you think if you give your all to God, that you will lose. Use your wisdom, use your, your capacity, and see whether you and the man who serve God, whether who will stand. Nothing in this world will satisfy. Only Jesus, you are the God that holds on dry. Time, time is a body. Number two, fear. 
the fear of harm. The fear of harm. That's the fear that things, the fear of things that could cause harm to us or the things we own. Psalm 91 verse 10, very quickly. I will run through it now. Psalm 91 verse 10. I will run through it. Psalm 91 verse 10. Everybody, let's read together. It is projected. One, two, go. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. Now, that place you see, thee, say me. Let's read one more time. One, two, go. This is a subconscious area of fear. Many people are so scared of harm. Harm to them and harm to the things they love. Harm to their possessions. This is how people can just sit down quietly and then they are tormented by a subconscious fear that, you know, something can go wrong. I know a story of a man who bought a car and every night he will lose the tires of the car. He will go through the street, he will lose the tires and roll the tires into his house and say, they won't, you will see how they will steal it now. That is, is, it not, is it not when they come with their own four tires that they can move? According to the story, because I, I didn't witness it, it's a story I heard. That one day, thieves got so offended at the way this man was doing this thing. So they brought tires and fixed in the car and wrote a note and left it for him when he woke up that if we wanted to steal it, it should be gone by now. Rest. Rest. Fear of harm. Fear of harm. It's a torment. Don't just laugh about it. Many of you, you are conscious of many things. You are conscious of diseases. You are conscious of many things in your life. And all is the fear of harm. Somebody called me the other day. I didn't pick. I saw a text message. And then I started saying, please, Lord, let nothing happen to apostle. I said, what is this? That's... That's a trauma there. It's, 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 a, it's, 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 it's an experience that better that kind of reaction. Later I called. I said, what, what happened? You called once. I didn't pick. And you feel something bad has happened to me. I said, that is how they had a friend some time back. And, you know, they just heard suddenly they tried to call them. They didn't pick. Unknown to them, they have been kidnapped. Fear of harm. Nothing in this world will satisfy me. Only Jesus, you are the God that won't try. You are the treasure of my heart and of my soul. In my weakness, you are merciful. Redeemer of my past and present wrong. You are the holder of my future days to come. There is no better place to find peace and rest like that knowledge that God is with you. The scripture I read to us, because I said I will run through it. It says, no evil shall befall thee, neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. Are you conscious of this? You know what it meant by no evil? It means no evil will befall you. I don't care what is happening in the nation. I don't care how rampant kidnapping cases have become. It says, no evil shall befall thee. Neither shall any plague. Plague means infirmity, sickness. This is what keeps people in fear. The fear of harm. I met a woman. I was counseling with her and she told me that she has never driven in her life before. Never driven a car. I said, what happened? She said she had an encounter some years back where she saw herself in a ghastly accident. Meanwhile, it is a dream. It is a dream. That consciousness now ministers a fear. She has not entered the road. 
and there are cars just parked there. You cannot go anywhere. You want to go to places, you are begging people. The fear of harm. There are people here who have entered relationships before now, who have transacted with people in business before now, and then the whole thing just went sour. You prayed and you knew you had God. And then you took a step and said yes to the brother. But along the line, all kinds of funny outcome now became the lot of the day. Now, a sincere person is in front of you, asking you out for the past four months, and you are still stuck in fear. The fear of harm. There are business opportunities that God opened, but the mistake of yesterday cannot let you take a step. You are dragging your feet until the opportunity closes. What is responsible for this lack of alignment? The fear of harm. Till today, there are people that continue to fight with innocent people because certain people in their yesterday gave them a very negative reflection, a very negative impression of mankind. And so you are very suspicious. I once had a neighbor like that. The person was living just beside me. Every night. <laughs> person will send me a text message and say did you hear that sound I will say wait wait please what is this what is this? <laughs> so if I don't answer they will call again they will call and say please sir sorry to disturb your rest did you did you did you hear the sound it I say which sound he say it's as though some something is crying I say look at this one the fear of is a torment now such a person that fear alone is an atmosphere that entertains all other affliction. You will find out that they will become, they will, they, will, they will lack sleep at night because night is a time of torment for them. There are people here that fear the night, like me some years back. There is no posture of sleep I did not try. I will sleep facing the ground, they will still press me. I will face up, they will press me. I will face side, they will press me. I will put Bible under the pillow, they will press me. There is nothing creative that was not done. Somebody told me the other day that there's one formula that I should cross my neck like this if I'm sleeping. <laughs> the fear of harm. You know where you overcome fear from? You subscribe to a higher economy. Fear is only real in a defeated version of your manifestation. The moment you subscribe to higher versions of yourself, you will realize the things you are running from can run from you. This is part of the things you touch when you engage certain spiritual practices like fasting. Try if you are here and you are always pressed, always afflicted in the night. You know, we always try to modernize these things. Somebody came and said, sometimes I, I go through sleep paralysis. <laughs> I say, look, <laughs> no sleep paralysis. <laughs> okay, let me I don't want to go into this. Have you been under a, a, a condition where you wanted to say, G, G, G? <laughs> you like this, as big as you are, you, you, they, they made sure your vocal cord, even your vocal cord cannot, cannot comply. At that moment, a being, a being is wrestling for dominion. Something wants to take over your body. Something wants to invade your space. It is, it is a, a, a contention between your spirit man and the spirit that wants to inhabit you. That's what you are seeing as a momentary lose of your control. That's why you always wake up in the midst of that thing. Fear of harm. Mete makona, mete makona, mete makona, mete makona. Mazanji soroba. Mazanji soroba. Me tei ma kona Psalm 
Psalm 34 verse 7. I want everybody to read it very loud to yourself. You, you are reading it for yourself, so I need you to say it until you believe it. One, two, go. The angel of the Lord encamped round about them that fear him to deliver them. Do you fear the Lord? Be conscious that you have protocols of celestial beings. I'm not alone. I am guarded. I am heavily fortified. I am not alone. Them that are with me are more. This, this is what Elisha prayed to Lord. He says, open his eyes. These are the things that follow me everywhere I go. Give him the capacity to see it briefly. Let him know why I am this bold. Then God opened the eye of the servant and he saw the whole valley was surrounded by chariots of fire. One man, an entourage of celestial being, escorting him inside time. Some of you, is because you have never caught glimpse at the resources that have been deployed to make sure you fulfill destiny. That is why you are fidgeting. If you know the beings, if you see some angels that stand by you, you would have been bouncing by now. Or you are scared when Satan shows up. You don't know that you are not alone. You are not alone. He says the angel of the Lord encamped. You know what it means to encamp? To surround. My back is covered. My front is covered. My sides are covered. Up is covered. Down. Nowhere Satan can follow. I am guarded. I am surrounded. I am not alone. I am not alone. If you are a witch here, come and check whether I am alone. <laughs> I am not alone. I am not alone. Somebody tell yourself these things. I am not alone. The angels of the Lord, they encamp round about them that fear him. Mazanji kunyaba. How do you overcome the fear of harm? You overcome the fear of harm by entrusting your life and properties into the safe hands of God. You overcome the fear of harm by entrusting your life and properties into the safe hands of God. How do you entrust your life and property? You entrust your life and properties by striking covenant practices. How do you bring God to be Lord over your business? How do you make God Lord over your family? How do you make God Lord over your job? Because anything God is not a Lord of, he is not responsible for. He is only responsible for the things that are submitted to him. And many of these areas of our life, God is not Lord over it. You bring God into any space by initiating covenant practices. There are those of us sitting here. Nothing leaves our life for kingdom advancement. You are not winning souls. You are not helping the missionaries that are in the field to make it easy for them because that is part of your kingdom labor. You are not interested in any agenda of God. The day darkness will rise against your company, there is nothing in that company that is a link to the agenda of God. And so you have not brought God into that space. How do you bring God into something you are doing? You engage God by covenant practices just living for yourself your family is your own no God so far so good it looks like it's going well wait until the wind and the waves come you will know that it is only those who have their foundation on the solid rock only those ones will remain Are you living any area of your life outside the influence of God? If you are wise, you will submit it by engaging covenant practices. You are mighty on your throne. Hmm. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Hadosh. Hados, you are mighty on your throne. 
Number three. Ah, time. Time is a burden. I will run now. I will run. <laughs> Number three. Personal fears. Personal fears. These are experiences that could affect us personally like shame, rejection, failure. These are personal fears. There are many of us where we sustain a fear of rejection. And it is something that we must deal with tonight. I will not be able to talk about shame. I may not be able to talk about failure. But I will just give us scriptures. I will dwell on rejection so that I run through it. So that we don't stay here too long. Um, dwell, dwell chapter 2 verse 26. Dwell chapter 2 verse 26. The Bible says, And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that had dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. Please say I will never be ashamed. You see, there are people that sustain this personal fear. Fear for shame fear of failure and fear of rejection. Philippians, very quickly. Philippians. Let's, let's, take, let's, take, let's take 1 John. 1 John chapter 4 verse 18. 1 John chapter 4 verse 18. Everybody, let's read together. One, two, go. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casted out fear because fear had torment he that feareth I told us I will dwell on rejection amen I said amen. amen see look at me in Genesis chapter 2 verse 25 look at me just look at me the Bible says the man and his wife were both naked and unashamed. Look at me. There are only a few people that will experience genuine love in their lifetime. Because before you can receive love, there is a posture you must sustain to be able to truly embrace love. You can't experience love genuinely if you don't have that posture. And that's what I want to share with you. In Genesis 2:25, that I'm reading out for us, the Bible says they were both naked, so it means they came exactly as they are. Nobody is trying to make an impression. Nobody is trying to hide an aspect of their areas of deficiencies. Unfortunately, from relationships to marriages, a lot of people continue to pretend for years. They can't even loosen up to let people know exactly who they are. There are still husbands. A friend of mine got married and he was trying to make an impression to his wife. Because when they were dating, he made her felt like he was a creature of midnight prayer. That there is something about us that have been burdened with the zeal of the Lord. It consumes us. We lose sleep. Food has no taste for us. So the lady was looking at him as a celestial. When they now got married and entered the same space that she has the capacity to observe him and know who he truly is he tried he tried to keep that routine but you cannot you cannot lie for long so in the night when she is sleeping he would get up and shout some tongue so that the thing will wake her up so she would say kai this guy he has he has held on to the horns of the altar the moment he observed that she has gone back to sleep he will now go and sleep in the other room and then lock the door. Then he will come back later and do like this. This will be tarried all night. When God, when God wants to expose you, he will make sure that all your plan, your, your ability, everything will still expose you. Came to pass that one day he entered that room and pretended because he, he will own a sound the background so you would think priesthood business is happening there and he told her please whenever I enter here it's red eye business there's no need no need to enter the moment God wanted to expose him he fell into slumber and he started snoring loud so it was the sound of snow at first she thought it was groaning You 
know why I love Jesus? Love the Holy Ghost because He's the only one that genuinely knows you and never judges you. He knows everything about you. All the impression you are trying to make with men. Look, let me tell you one truth. The moment you can truly be vulnerable before a person, you can enjoy love if they give you that love in the face of your vulnerability. It means you felt totally embraced. There was no part of you that was hidden. The fear of rejection. There are husbands that cannot tell their wife what they truly want because they are scared that they will perceive them as being weird. There are wives that cannot open up to their husband what is the real cause of her lack of fulfillment because they are scared. And so until people come naked and in the midst of that nakedness, you embrace each other. Hey, see, you give love to people in the most, in fact, the most effective time to administer love is when they don't deserve it. If you love those who love you, if you love those who are good to you, even Gentiles do that. But if you show love to a person who has concluded in their heart that what they deserve from you is vengeance and you now give love, you have, you have touched a place where only few will touch in their life. They will live the rest of their life trying to prove to you that you didn't make a mistake. <laughs> Naked, unashamed. Let me apply this very quickly to husbands and wife. You will truly enjoy marriage the day you keep pretense, you keep building a narrative, you keep making an impression aside, and you come exactly as you are. This is me. Your wife too, this is me. And both of you embrace first, starting from the area of your weakness and building to strength together. That picture is beautiful. Unfortunately, there are all kinds, there are people pretending about their financial states, people pretending about their background, people denying their parents. It's a, it's a funny thing that happens out there. People denying their biological names. Naked and unashamed. <laughs> you are good. And your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good, and your mercy is forever. just think it's important I add this very quickly even while dating it's very important to show up as you are even while dating it's very important this is why many people continue to recycle old results you date for two years then it breaks you date for seven months then it breaks what is breaking this thing it could have broken it from the beginning so people take a why then they stumble upon a detail something that they say car I cannot tolerate this. It is better you lay everything bare from the beginning. Save yourself time. Save yourself time. And I am repeating this again. There are many of us under unnecessary pressure because of the fear of rejection. You fear that people will reject you if you show up the way you are. Meanwhile, when you are relating with God, you can't hide anything. You show up exactly as you are. However, there are a lot of us that carry that same behavior into our relating with God. You are trying to make an impression. Somebody goes to God and say, Lord, I've been praying and there is no answer. Whether you answer or not, you are still God. I now did like this. <laughs> if your heart does not sustain that posture and all you are doing is trying to blackmail God, emotional blackmail, and say, Lord, even though you provide or not, you are always on the throne. You will do that with your fellow man. When you come to God, be a baby. Be honest. If you are not happy, say you are not happy. If you are sad, say you are sad. If you are crying, cry before him. Let God see your behavior exactly as it is. But people carry this idea. You are always trying to build a narrative. Naked and on.
a shame. How do you overcome that personal fear? You overcome personal fears by yielding to and resting in the love of God. You overcome personal fears by yielding to and resting in the love of God. You overcome personal fears by yielding to and resting in the love of God. You embrace God's love for you. You embrace God's love for you that is not based on a reason. That love supersedes every other thing. Perfect love casted out fear. That's how you overcome that fear. For want of time, we're going to run very quickly. Number four, fear of the unknown. This is where many people are trapped. Fear of the unknown. This is the fear of the things that are out of our control. For example, the future. The future. The future. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. The Bible says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Verse 7, very quickly. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. Be anxious for nothing. Please tell somebody by your side, be anxious about nothing. Come on, say it again. Be anxious about nothing. The fear of the unknown. Am I going to get married? Will I ever make it in life? Am I going to live long? Will I come down with a disease? All kinds of fear that is lodged in the future that has not come yet. This is what motivates many people's behavior. The fear of the unknown. Let me show you a scripture that must wed you and become for you a fortress of defense. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. Isaiah 41 verse 10. I want you to read it as loud as you can. One, two, go. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. This is God continuing to reiterate his commitment to making sure that your future is guaranteed. The way Nigeria is going like this, will anything truly good happen? Are we going to experience progress? Fear not. Fear not. With the security challenge everywhere, and I have to be traveling. Are you sure? It's fear not. 70 times God commanded you, fear not. Do not be afraid. This is the instruction. There's a peace that I have. In spite of all the shakings that surrounds me And this peace is in my heart And it comes alive every time I hear your voice There's a peace there I have In spite of all the darkness that surrounds me And this peace is in my heart Only comes alive every time I hear your words Fear thou not You overcome the fear of the unknown by an intimate relationship with God and securing his voice. An intimate relationship with God and securing his voice. He says, and thou shalt hear a voice from behind you saying, this is the way, 
walk in it. If you secure his voice, you have overcome the fear of the unknown because you are guided. You are guided. Every step is guided. You lead me and guide me to my place of destiny. You lead me and guide me to my place of destiny. You lead me and guide me to my place of destiny. You lead me and guide me to my place of destiny. Lastly, thank you for your time. <laughs> Fear caused by reflection and thoughts. Fear caused by reflections and thoughts. This is fear due to the meditation and imaginations of our hearts. Fear due to the meditations and imaginations of our hearts. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5. I, I want everybody to read this with me. Everybody wherever you are. Let's read together. One, two, go. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Casting down imaginations, bringing into captivity every thought. There is a realm of attack where Satan whispers into your heart. It's called Nakash. It's called Nakash, the whispers of the serpent. Where you will be walking and you will just receive an inspiration, a thought will enter your heart that what if you die? Ah, are there people here that have fought that battle before? You can just wake up one day minding your business and a thought just enters your heart. What if they tell you one of your children die? It's called Nakash, the whisper of the serpent. It is this kind of battle that Joyce Mayer captured in her book called the battlefield of the mind. Spirits leave all the physical aspect and they begin to want to collapse your convictions by bringing thoughts and imaginations into your heart. You can just be there and a thought enters your heart and say, what if you don't live long? What if they diagnose you very soon with one organ failure or another? You are sleeping and something say, what if you don't wake up? It's called Nakash. A majority, I believe, over 90% of your warfare is at that level, the heart. Hmm. Who told you you will not make it in life? Nakash. Something whispered to you that look at the way time is going. Are you sure? Are you sure you have not missed your best years? Are you sure the way you have? Look, look, it's called Nakash. It says pulling down every high thing and bringing under subjection every thought. So the thought is not your own. They say bring it under subjection. Subjection to what? The counsel of God for your life. You heard that what if you die? What do you subject that thought to? I shall not die but live to declare the works of the Lord. When a thought enters your heart, don't reply by thinking about scripture. Reply by speaking about scripture. Because if you reply thoughts with thoughts, it's called worry. Allow Satan to know that you know he was the one that spoke. By replying vocally with scripture. Sometimes you can just wake up from sleep with a loud scripture on your lip. It's something you want to get the message clear. I know you just spoke, Satan. I know you were the one that whispered this thing into my heart. What if they didn't call you for the interview? You don't wake up into fasting. You wake up bringing that thought into subjection. I am the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. I have more understanding than the ancients. I know more than my teachers. Listen, you... Hi. I want you to take one minute and check your mind. Look for everything hidden there that is not of God. It's called Nakash. The whisper of the serpent. It's not God that said that one. You are going to be lifting scriptures, scriptures and reply those things.
What if this sickness that killed your father? What if this sickness that killed your mother? What if it is inside you too? It's called Nakas. You don't wake up and start describing how you are feeling. Somebody gets up ignorantly and say, Kai, I don't know why I'm just feeling like somebody will die. Why did you say that? It's a thought. You carry a scripture and challenge it. Somebody speak. You to carry the words of God and speak against that reality. I wave goodbye, I wave goodbye, I wave goodbye to the torment of fear. Perfect love casteth out fear. The future is not uncertain for me. He that holds the future, he that holds the future, I'm in his hands. Every atmosphere of fear that becomes a, a brooding ground for spirits of affliction. Tonight, by the light of your word, I banish fear out of my destiny. Fear not. My going out and my coming in is preserved. Some of us fear for our children. You are looking and you are thinking, what does the future hold? Give them Jesus and be rest assured that the future is good. not be not dismayed I am with you at all times even unto the ends of the world I will never leave you or forsake you I'm not alone
I command the grip of fear, the spirit of fear over the life of people to be broken now in the name of Jesus Christ. I set you free from the grip of that spirit. I command the hold of the spirit of fear be broken now in the name of Jesus Christ. You are set free. You are set free. There are two people here that I want us to handle this case quickly before we go. A strong grip of fear. It's, it's, it's a case that has tarried for long. Kept you under torment. Always suggesting negativity. You are a lady. You are a lady. A strong grip of fear. Holy Ghost, help me find that one. Bring, bring that lady. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Show mercy tonight. Show mercy, show mercy. Show mercy. Fear is a spirit. This is why I don't want you to be excited. This is why I calm this thing down. So that you can, we can handle a matter directly. There's another person here. You are used to a pattern. A pattern of things almost working and then it will deteriorate. Things almost working out, then you will lose it. By the power of the Most High God, let there be an unveiling. Holy Ghost. Unveil, unveil. Fear, fear is a spirit. I'm speaking to a spirit now. Ushers, bring them out. Everybody, if you can receive it, lift your hand above your head. Anybody in this hall tonight that any spirit has appeared to and, and threatened you or said anything to you that is echoing in your heart just to cause fear, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I banish the spirit of fear now. Holy Ghost, touch, touch, touch. Please, pardon me, I know time is fast spent. There are things I see right now. I will lose my peace if I go home without handling it. I'm seeing something like a frog standing behind a brother. Like a frog standing behind a brother with a very vengeful look. And it is because of this matter right now. I declare every spiritual entity that is threatening, that is causing fear, that is causing you to stay in an atmosphere of fear, I command their hold be broken in the name of Jesus. That spirit is a liar. 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 Every lying spirit whispering the suggestions of Satan into your heart, causing you to be restless and troubled by the power of the Holy Ghost. I command those spirits be gone now in the name of Jesus Christ. of the serpent is called Nakash Nakash for some of you he has dropped a seed told you that you will lose somebody that somebody will die continue to whisper it continue to whisper it until you, you can't help yourself you try to remove your heart from it but every time you think again that thought comes back 
It's a warfare. It's a warfare. Holy Ghost, like a man of war, move through this place and begin to do a quick, a quick walk, a quick walk upon the hearts of your people. And everything you have not planted, every thought, every hiding, let it be uprooted. Let it be uprooted. Let it be uprooted. Let it be uprooted in the name of Jesus Christ. of the beginning of a new experience in my life you are here and you know you are very sure that God brought this message to usher you into a new season thank you Jesus every voice of the liar every voice of the liar is silenced tonight there are those of us here that the only thing standing between us and this new marvelous life is the lack of spiritual commitment to the throne of God your life is not defined by any government you are up today you are down tomorrow the devil continues to have a few day because there is no stability in James chapter 1 verse 6 and 7 he says a double minded man is unstable in all his ways let that man not think that he will receive anything valuable from the Lord you are here and you know that today is the beginning today is the beginning of a new season over your life that everything changes from today it starts with a decision you decide to wave goodbye to the world, goodbye to the ordinance and rudiments of this world, goodbye to your weaknesses. This is the last time I will be like this. This is the last time I operate with weakness. I will not be a puppet in the hand of Satan anymore. You are here and you want to make a public decision. Help those people at the back, help them. You want to make a public decision for Jesus. Run forward very quickly. Just run forward. Don't waste time. Run forward. Come. 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 It is the master that summons his own. The master. The master has need for you. Come. This is the end. The end of fear. The end of shame. The end. I sense in my spirit that the fire of God will fall upon people now. Whether you are expectant or not, wherever you are, just lift up your hearts to heaven now. Holy Ghost, baptize us with fresh fire. 
fresh fire fresh fire from the back to the front from the left to the right fresh fire let it spread in this place only your name will stand upon their life let every other thing be brought down fresh fire Fresh fire. Fresh fire. Fire on my head. Fire on my feet. Fire everywhere. Until I am sanctified. Consume me with fire. The Holy Ghost is moving in this place. You will be wise. You will be wise if you are not distracted. You will be also wise if you are not familiar. To all of my brothers and sisters who hearkened to the eternal call of God and came out for the sake of declaring once and for all visibly and openly that from today my life attains stability with God. No more up and down. I will no longer serve any interest that is not of God. Please, everybody outside, join me and say this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, today I make a deliberate decision to stand for you. I believe that you died and I believe you rose again. From today, I receive salvation and I receive eternal life. I receive power over sin and its consequences. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that I am born again. If you have prayed that prayer, congratulations. Listen, li no, 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 don't clap. Look. Everybody outside, just place your hand on your chest. A few of you will receive certain gifts now. There is a gift that God has for a few of you. Certain things will be opened. You have not, you have not discovered it in your life before. There will be people's eyes that will open now. Their eyes. Some people's ears will open. Your dreams will become very sharp. You will have capacity to receive the messages and the burdens of God. Even lost giftings will be found again. The things that you missed, the things you used to have, and then it was lost in the days of ignorance. And so, Father, from the back to the front, the left and the right, let your power generously, generously begin to restore and begin to unlock hidden potentials. Begin to unlock hidden giftings. Let it come alive. Jesus, congratulations, congratulations. Walk in this consciousness. Be conscious of the life that has been stirred on your inside. Don't go back and, and, and fall into that normal oppression where Satan now comes and lord over you again. Be conscious of the life you have received. That life will teach you. That life will instruct you. That life will change your appetites. The things the life will be hungry for will be different. Because it is a new life. It's called eternal life. It has been stirred on your inside. That life will choose your interest now. Don't dishonor that life. Don't ignore it. Don't quench it. Yield to its burdens. 
if it say pray, pray. If it says you should fast, fast. If it say don't eat, don't eat. But by all means, yield to the nudgings of that life. And the more you yield to it, the greater the measure of ventilation you will feel in your soul. God bless you. You can go to your seats. God bless you. Feels like heaven on earth. There is lightning and thunder. Miracles and wonders. Sound of many waters. Heaven on lightning and thunder. Miracles and wonders. Sound of many waters. Heaven on lightning and thunder. Heaven on excited you know God has done a great thing in your life can you give Jesus a shout lightning and thunder miracles and wonder sound of many waters heaven on earth listen every undesirable experience Every wall of Jericho, everything that continues to cause you distress and stress, we are going to shout at the count of three, and the Egyptians you have known before, you will see them no more. Are you ready? I want you to gather all your worries, gather all your concern, gather them in your head now, gather them, gather them, gather them. At the count of three, we are going to shout, one in the name of Jesus. Two in the name of Jesus. Three right now. Feels like heaven. Hey, something's moving. Something's changing. Seas low way. Feels like something's moving. Something's moving. Something's changing. Seas low way. Feels like something's moving. Something's changing. Seas low way. people praise me let the people praise me and the earth shall yield forth her increase listen listen don't be too big before God don't be too collected before God Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. From January 2023 down to December 2023, now you are in January 2024. Satan every day continue to try his best attack. There was no day Satan did not attempt. Look at you still in the house of God praising his name. Heaven. Heaven on it. Do you know what the plan is? The plan is that by now you will be so sad, so defeated, so demoralized, walking with your hair down. But look at you now. Give Jesus a shout. Something's changing. She's lowering. Feels like something's moving. See his glory. There is lightning and miracles and wonders. When I tell you 
to do, when I tell you to do certain things, I'm not trying to excite you. It takes humility to not always understand before you obey. It says the kings of this world came together and took counsel against God and against his anointed. But the one who sat upon the throne shall laugh. That's why I told you to rejoice. Anybody that rejoiced, that is your lot for 2024. It's joy. It's joy. See his glory. Feel that something moving. Something changing. See his glory. Feel that hell. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. By the grace of God, listen. Listen now, please. Amen, amen, amen. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. And there are pleasures forevermore. It is joy. Listen, listen, look at me, look at me, everybody. It is joy that is responsible for pleasure. First, there is fullness of joy. And then there are pleasures forevermore. He says, with joy shall you draw from the wells, the heritage, the deposits, the inheritance of salvation is by joy you will draw it. You are here instead of you to encourage yourself in the Lord, always sad, wearing a long face, never laughing. You are doing yourself. Oh, listen, there's something my mother used to tell us. <laughs> you do something, she will now look at you and say, it's yourself you are doing. You are not doing it. You are doing yourself. <laughs> Rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say, rejoice. rejoice. Amen. Hallelujah. Please, we take, while standing, we take two, three announcements, and then we go. First, while standing, I want us to Celebrate God's choice servant. It's always a privilege to have him here. Apostle Kenny is in the house. Thank you so much, man of God. It's such a privilege. Also, our mother, mommy, Mrs. Koti is also with us. Let's celebrate our mother. Thank you, mommy. Thank you, ma. A friend of the house and our brother, God's choice servant, evangelist, Zuahu, is also with us. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you and many other erudite ministers of the gospel that for want of time I will not be able to go over our names one after the other. My brother and covenant friend, Minister Dari Strings, is also with us. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Amen. If you have observed, this is our sixth meeting here and God has been faithful. Although we are encountering one or two hitches, but we would overcome it. And then by the grace of God, on the 1st of February, 2024, time 12 p.m., venue, Abikut Hall, number 48 to 49, Chiroma Street, and Gwanyelwa Television, there would be worship team audition. There will be worship team audition. If you want to join the worship team, please take note of these dates. Not just you want to join because you are passionate. You know that you are gifted. You know that God has given you the capacity to minister in that Regard, please, on the 1st of February, which happens to be a Thursday, 12 p.m., come to our center in Angwan Yelwa Television, and you will meet the um, necessary leaders there to make sure you are taken through the process successfully. Number two, it's also a call to join the following workforce. One, the ushering department. The ushering department. Number two, uh, the protocol department. Please, I want all the heads of this department to run forward quickly. Just run. There's no time. Run and stand here. Ushering department, the protocol department, the technical department, and the media department. Quickly, let's have somebody stand here so that, please, if you want to join any of these departments, be quick. 
if you want to join any of these departments, you can, you can just make your way or meet them at the end of the meeting and register your names and, you know, we can um, carry it on from there. If you are here and you have certain skill as regarding media, please, not just them, I need you. We need, we need to do, um, there's an agenda and there's a strategy God has given to us, but we need skilled hands uh, in the media to bring it to pass. Also, by the grace of God, I would be ministering at the El, El Pa'al Conference um, 2024 at Faith Builders Intercession Church, Baggy Villa. Uh, the, the details, subsequent details, uh, thank you, is projected, so you would be able to follow uh, up. By the grace of God, also, our healing and healing and communion service holds every Tuesday at Habikut Hall number 48 to 49 Churuma Street and Gwan Yerua is another atmosphere is different from this it's very intense it's for prayer it's for petitions it's for intercession and ultimately it's for encounters so it has been a marvelous time where we come and experience the healing touch of God and also his magnificent hands in our midst by the grace of God this week Friday is the travail who is excited I thought I thought you would not clap. This week, Friday, is the travail. The travail is five hours with Jesus. We come and stretch the flesh in prayer for five hours until we touch something that is divine. So please, begin to gather capacity. Remember, we come fasting. So you cannot eat and come for travail. Just prepare and come. We are going to press until we enter new heights. We gain new structures in the spirit. It is what the Lord has called us to do in this season. Also, by the grace of God, this meeting called the Anakazo Experience holds here every Sunday at TMC Hall by 5 p.m. Um, every Sunday. So please feel free to invite friends, invite families, as God is set to change our lives and shift our seasons. God bless you as you comply. I want to quickly add this to everybody who is listening and also to those who follow us online. By the grace of God, from tomorrow being Monday, we are engaging a little shift in our fasting schedule. We will go from 6, by the grace of God, to 8 p.m. tomorrow. If you can, that 8 p.m. is the benchmark. If you can, we do 24 hours. Amen. So on Monday, we stretch 24 hours. On Tuesday, we come for Congress. There is something God wants to do in our lives, but it requires our partnership. There is a, a, I don't want to minister fear, so I don't want to describe it in its details. But there is something lodged in the world of spirits that we must exempt ourselves from. And every time the Lord brings these things to our eyes, it is important that his people engage the mysteries that makes for exemption. In the days when the spirits of death visited the camp of Israel, um, Egypt, the children of Israel were told to put blood on their doorposts. So in a time where a lot of doom has been predicted, we will need to exempt ourselves by strategic spiritual instructions. So tomorrow, by the grace of God, we will fast. When you go home, like the angel that woke Elijah up, eat, eat, because the journey ahead is far. Now I have advice for somebody. If you eat too much, the hungry that would worry you in the fasting, you will not believe it. So stay with strength. Eat for strength. Don't eat for revenge huh? we will converge on Tuesday at the hall and then we will press amen we have come to the end of our meeting please celebrate and love one another before we go I sing I sing I sing the song of songs mm -hmm. I dance I dance I the dance of the angels Oh, I gaze, I gaze, I gaze Into the eyes of love I sing, I sing I'm
Oh, give me you, oh. 